This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on atmospheric pressure. It's part of the atmospheric science playlist. And we're looking at air pressure, both high pressure and low pressure, and how these two different conditions that occur naturally in the atmosphere caused by difference in temperature across the Earth's surface, which causes a change in pressure, and the relationship between this pressure and gravity and the conditions that this pressure creates in the atmosphere. So as a recap of what atmospheric pressure is, so we're, we're dealing with gases. So atmospheric gases are variation between nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and trace gases, which include water vapor. Now, the gases have a molecular weight, both individually and as a cumulative addition of all the atmospheric mass. Now, this mass is acted upon by gravity and gravitational forces, and it is brought down towards the surface of the Earth because gravity is a force of attraction towards the center of our planet to the center of the mass. So our gravity is going down towards the center of our planet, which involves bringing the air, which includes the air molecules, which we discussed, down towards the surface. So around 99% of all the mass or the air molecules in our atmosphere is within the first from the surface, which is zero kilometers up to around 50 kilometers, which is our stratopause. Basically meaning that the troposphere and the stratosphere contain pretty much all of the atmospheric gases and the mass. So the weight, which is gravity plus the mass, the weight, which is the force applied to an area, which is the air pushing down on the surface, this creates a certain amount of weight that in each area can be recorded. And for this purpose, we're going to use millibars as our atmospheric pressure unit of choice. You can use Newton meters or kilopascals or pascals. We use millibars in this case. And this creates an average, an average pressure of 1,013 millibars on the surface as an average, caused by gravity and the weight of the molecules pushing down through gravity on the surface. Now, in addition to what it is, we have to look at how it changes. So the average is 1,013 millibars, but across the surface in different locations and different geographic areas, we have a different pressure value at the surface. We're talking about surface here, because if we look at our surface, there is a consistent theme whereby the pressure is the highest by the surface, which again is 1,013, which is the average. But as you increase in altitude and you go away from the surface against gravity, so to speak, the higher you go, the less air molecules there are, therefore the less atmospheric pressure there is putting pushing down on a certain area or certain altitude. So as you start at 1,013, by one kilometer up, you've gone down to around half of the pressure. And then two kilometers, which is not really that high, you're looking at 300 millibars. And three kilometers, four or five, you're getting less and less and less air pressure up to the point where towards where space is, which is considered between 100 kilometers on average, you're looking at 0.0001 millibars of pressure at around 100 kilometers, which we define really, or NASA defines as what space is, or the beginnings of space, where you are technically leaving the atmosphere. There are some air molecules there, but really not enough to distinguish an actual atmosphere. And this would be in the thermosphere, going towards the space station and up towards Hubble. So let's go back to why there is different pressures. There's an average, but different pressures. So you have our surface and you have our incoming solar radiation and it heats the surface and there is convection and there's also radiation, convection and conduction and the surface is going to heat the first or bottom layer of our atmosphere which is the troposphere and with heat comes rising air 
and then you get what's called adiabatic heating, where the air is going to change pressure, therefore change temperature. But the surface heats the air, air is going to rise. So this rise in air would lower the air pressure at this particular location or location on the surface geographically. And if some air is rising, then we have to have an area because it has to balance out within the troposphere where the air is sinking. So there is an area of rising air which would make the pressure lower, so lower than 1013 millibars. And then there's an area that's going to have air that's descending or sinking, which would add more air pushing down on the surface. So this would increase or raise, raise or increase the atmospheric pressure on the surface at that particular location that would be above 1,013 millibars. So it could be included or it could be also included there. So, so lower air pressure could be anything between 1,000 to 875, which is extreme uh, cyclone. Or air that's rising, air that's descending and causing higher pressure could be anything between 100 and 1,020 up to 1,050, so a very high pressure. And this can change the atmospheric conditions based on what the pressure is doing and everything else kind of follows. So we have our low pressure diagram on the right here. Air is rising through different processes. So the air can be lifted through heat, through orographics, and also through convergence. And the last one can be lifted through frontal. So the four main types of lifting air. When you lift air, you're gonna make air rise up and you're going to lower the pressure at the surface. So that generally, when you lower the pressure, you're gonna to have to have a, a movement or a cycle or a force in the air to move into the area where the air is rising. So you have wind, which is a bunch of air molecules moving in the same direction, caused by a difference in pressure, which is caused by a difference in temperature. This wind will bring in air from around the outside of this low pressure towards it, so we call it like a vacuum cleaner, where the air is being sucked up through these different processes, these different means, to a higher elevation, and this will cause adiabatic cooling, where the air changes temperature, caused by a difference in pressure, so it gets colder and colder and colder, the higher you go, with less air pressure as well, but the low pressure right here, which would be below 1013 millibars, would suck in the air, and we call it the vacuum cleaner, it's gonna bring air up. When this happens, when this happens, the conditions obviously change. The main one is when you make air rise, it's going to cool down adiabatically. It's going to contain, sometimes it contains water vapor. If that air mass comes off a source of water, where you have evaporation, you have water vapor, and the cooling down water vapor will form condensation at the dew point in LCL and start to stimulate cloud formation, and you get different types of weather which involve clouds. You have weather but blue skies but clouds and you have different systems of clouds and different systems of precip and function of amount of water vapor, the heat and the wind and wind shear and from this we can create all of the different systems of clouds and weather that we can observe and study things like rain and, and sleet and snow and thunderstorms and lightning, tornadoes, hurricanes, you name it, all comes from low pressure. Low pressure is the key and the starting point of making air rise that will cause the other weather systems to be created, to be formed. So on the flip side, we have higher pressure. So it's pressure that's going to be above 1,013 millibars. Now, as you see this, we have air that is descending, air that is sinking and falling back down through difference in density. So colder air up by the pores, which is between 10 to 15 kilometers in the air on average, the colder denser air is going to sink down, it sinks down, it's going to heat slowly through adiabatic heating, which means as you go down towards the surface, we increase in pressure, which would also increase our temperature of our air parcel. Now this high pressure air that's sinking and pushing down, it's pushing down on the surface. In addition to our lovely gravity, you're gonna have a higher air pressure, which is the opposite to our lower pressure where air is leaving the area. And we're discussing the area around the surface. Now, yes, we have gravity, we have the, perhaps you have the ground that's heating the air, but generally you have this overall sinking air 
even if the ground is going to be heated. The high pressure overpowers the heating and rising. So this high pressure could be anything around like 1050, whatever, or 1060, but you have this higher air pressure and you see the air has to go somewhere. With low pressure, it was being drawn in and sucked up, whereas this diagram, the air is being pushed down and it can't go through the surface because it's air. I mean, some might go into the soil or the ground or the first few layers of the Earth's surface, but generally the majority of the air is forced to go elsewhere. It can't go back up, can't go down, so it, it gets forced to the sides and flows parallel to the Earth's surface, which we call surface wind. This surface wind will then eventually move and connect and be sucked into an area of low pressure. So the high pressure, the conditions that we expect from high pressure is stable atmosphere, which means the atmosphere is hasn't got a tendency to rise and move up higher altitudes. It has a tendency to stay where it is, stay still, it stays still, or it has a tendency to sink down to a lower altitude. Now, why is this important? Well, because if you heat the air adiabatically and you lower the altitude, you're not going to stimulate any kind of condensation. So condensation does not occur because you need water vapor to cool down to a lower temp to force condensation and a phase change back into water. So if you raise the temperature of the air, make it hotter, the water vapor inside the air maintains and stays as water vapor. It doesn't condense. So if you have no condensation, you have no cloud formation, you have no weather systems which involve clouds. What do you have? You have lovely blue sky, which is beautiful where you are, Australia, Asia, Africa, North America, Europe. You know, I'm from England, so we rarely see blue sky. And we do see blue sky, we, we treasure it and wonder when it could go away. And it usually goes away in the same day with some cloud formation, but that's just England. So the blue sky is the absence of clouds because clouds can't form because air is sinking and you have this beautiful stable atmosphere and for a short time especially in England you get a beautiful sunny day so when you combine these two different pressures high and low based on the movement of the air caused by changes in temperature which causes the eventual change in pressure at the surface you have the high pressure sinking and the low pressure rising but across the surface you have this wind that is generated to move the air from the high pressure towards the low pressure to complete the cycle and above at the pores you also have air moving horizontally parallel to the surface and that goes from the low pressure because it has to move up can't go any further than the pores you have this air moving towards the high pressure and then sinking due to density and forming the high pressure and the air that's going to descend so if you look at this big map on the right hand side i've kind of connected a couple of these high and low pressure areas or zones or belts and we could use like let's say geographically so this would be zero degrees or the uh, equator in terms of latitude and then we have 30 degrees north and south and the same 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south so you have this combination and kind of alternating pattern of high and low pressure across the earth's surface caused by the initial in this area here the initial heating of the equator and the tropics stimulating this low pressure air rising and then having this movement of air either side to fall down and descend at 30 degrees, creating the Hadley cell and inside here the ferrule cell and eventually over the poles, the polar cell. But you have this connected system of winds that are joining the high and low pressure together along the surface to either push air away or suck air in. So the high pressure I would call the leaf blower going to blow stuff on the surface away and then the low pressure would be our vacuum cleaner and that would suck in air up to high altitudes. So this combination of high and low pressure moves heat around the uh, surface and the around the atmosphere, namely the troposphere, which is this is showing, but also is going to stimulate wind systems on the surface and create different conditions or in the atmosphere based on stability which is low pressure is unstable so air is going to rise freely and high would be more stable and be more consistent air so high pressure we, we associate with nice calm light winds blue sky low pressure we associate with all different weather systems cyclonic systems 
mid latitude cyclones, frontal systems, cold front, warm front, storms, and basically any forms of precip. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.